play guitar like Carlos Santana, you'll need to be able to get his sound under your fingers. And to do that, you've got to first uh, learn to understand his sound. It's not your typical guitar playing because it isn't really rock and it isn't exactly blues. Some of his phrasing actually seems like jazz. And there is an obvious Latin overtone to his music. So to learn more about this popular guitarist, we're going to check out the guitar style of Carlos Santana on this week's Guitar Blog Insider. We probably already know more or less who Carlos Santana is, but if you don't, or maybe you can learn a few things more about him, uh, we're just going to talk about the history of Santana a little bit. Now, Carlos Santana is an incredibly accomplished musician who became famous in the late 1960s with his band Santana, which uh, pioneered a unique blend of rock and Latin music and jazz fusion. Now, Santana continued to work on these styles over the following decades, and he experienced a resurgence of popularity in the late 1990s. Rolling Stone magazine listed Santana as number 15 on their list of the 100 greatest guitar players of all time, and he has won an incredible 10 Grammy Awards. Well, Carlos's playing uses a lot of common positions on the neck, and his style applies most of the popular guitar patterns of both pentatonic and the full seven-tone scale. But it's uh, even more interesting how he uses those scales. That's kind of what makes the Santana difference. You know, long sustained notes, a lot of tremolo picking, a lot of well-placed bends. You know, those are the typical Santana playing style ideas. He favors the minor sound a lot more than major, and along with the minor scales and all that, he's using a lot of a Latin flavor, a Latin approach uh, by way of the Dorian mode. And this um, it tends to be also blended against some minor pentatonic with the harmonic minor scale. All right, now let's talk about his chords and harmony use. You know, Santana uses a mix of mostly minor harmony and he favors the popular guitar keys of uh, A minor, D minor, G minor, E minor. Those are the main ones. Uh, when you look through songs, you know, it becomes very evident. Uh, if we run through some tunes here, like, um, well, let's start with Evil Ways. That song is E minor, sort of Dorian mode as well. Uh, Game of Love, that's a straight E minor tune. Um, the song Into the Night, that's an A minor slash Dorian sound uh, plus love of my life that's another one that's uh, G minor though it's straight G minor as well as uh, Maria Maria that one again is um, straight minor but it's D minor so you, know, you can tell lots of minor keys but not everything is minor uh, you know the, he has that song I am somebody uh, that's a B flat major groove very cool groove in that song as well I definitely recommend checking that tune out uh, also the song he did with Michelle Branch that one's called I'm feeling you and that tune is in E major uh, so you know, you make a study of his harmonies and you look through what he's been doing, the most popular ideas that he likes to use. It's mainly leaning in the direction of natural minor, you know, Dorian mode, harmonic minor sounds. So, you know, to look at this further, let's go ahead now and run through some chord changes that I've sort of isolated and uh, they'll help you, you know, understand a little bit more about that Santana style and how he uses it in his music. Well, let's begin with a series of chord changes here that are going to fall into the category of what we'll simply refer to as a typical 12-bar progression Santana style. Now, similar to what you'll find in his song uh, Black Magic Woman, so keep that in mind for reference, uh, the key that we're going to use is D minor. It's going to be just a 12-bar progression that I have for you here. It's going to contain a mix of D natural minor with just a hint of harmonic over a um, A7 chord that's going to be found in the 10th measure. That's the point at which you would use the harmonic minor. So I've got a Latin beat here. I'm going to fire that up and we're just going to go through these chord changes. So there you go, those are the changes that we worked through. Um, it's a 12 bar blues right back to the top. Two measures up front of the D minor seven, and then two measures of A minor seven. Back to two measures of D minor seven, and then we're gonna do two measures of G minor seven. And that brings us to eight bars through. So now we have our final four measures. We're gonna go back to D minor seven, and then take a look at using A dominant seven, and then back to just a D minor triad.
All right. So that's a real typical type of progression that you're going to find uh, Santana enjoying using. Uh, you can tell very minor sounding, you know, very 100% natural minor, except for the appearance of that A dominant seven chord. And that's the point where, you know, in the soloing, let's say if you were using a lot of pentatonic. If you're going crazy with minor pentatonic on that A7 chord though, you can add in harmonic minor. So that means you're gonna play a, a natural minor scale with a raised seventh. All right, so keep that in mind. All you have to do is put a raised seventh tone into either your full natural minor scale, you replace the flat seven with a major seven, or you can just add the major seven tone. In this case, a key of a D minor is gonna be a C sharp. So adding in a C sharp is gonna give you a really nice sound over that A seventh, cover it perfectly. And uh, then you can move on and just keep jamming with your D natural minor. You can use a D minor pentatonic probably if you wanna really get that sound happening like Santana, use a ton of the minor pentatonic there, it'll sound great. So go ahead, record that progression, have some fun jamming on it. Uh, we're gonna take a short break, come back in just a moment with one more interesting harmony idea. Well, another popular sound used in hits uh, like his song Oya Koma Va is the strong application of Dorian mode. Now, I've organized a Dorian progression as a Santana style riff for you to try playing through. It focuses on this particular type of sound. So what's happening here is I've got an A minor seven chord that's gonna be moving to a D dominant nine. And it's really kind of important in this exercise that you attend to the rhythm that's gonna be given. And let me just walk through that first quickly, just so you understand fully how it's supposed to sound. You're going to be going like this, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... All right, so that's going to be the feel we're going for. Uh, be sure to practice the rhythm groove because, you know, it really helps define Santana's roots in the feel of the Latin style. So I have uh, another Latin beat that I'm going to fire up off the drum machine, and then we're going to get into playing this groove. Here we go. That's a lot of fun to play that type of jam. And you know what we're really doing here too in terms of harmony, you know, so you can think as well if you, you know, go and record this thing and want to start jamming on it. What we're looking at doing is thinking in terms of Dorian mode off of A because we're really playing the second and the fifth chord out of the key of G major. As you can tell, we never go to the G major chord. So this sort of like a modal loop, you know, just kind of going from a one minor chord to a four dominant chord. And that's going to give you a perfect opportunity to play a Dorian scale. You get a lot of nice sounds out of that scale and come up with some great licks. Don't forget to bend those half steps. You can come up with some fantastic lines. So record that one, have some fun jamming on that. Uh, I'm gonna take a break on discussing all the stuff with the harmonies and move around to getting more into his scales and single note line concepts. Well, next, let's take a look at the single note lines and the scale types and all that that uh, Santana likes to use. And in organizing scale types, you know, they're the most common for Santana's sound. The primary scale would have to be minor pentatonic. Santana uses this scale the most. And, you know, it operates almost, I would say, as the foundation for, you know, what his other lead playing heads into. And that said, um, you know, it does have equal application, though, alongside a natural minor. And he likes to bring in the sound of Dorian mode as well. Plus, he also likes to embellish the sound of harmonies in minor through the use of dominant seventh, five chords. And when you do that, it ends up offering an excellent opportunity there to be able to punch in some harmonic minor over the situation. So now what we're gonna do is let's get into running through some of the ways Santana works out melodic ideas with his scales.
Well, in the first melodic idea I want to go through with you, I'm applying a scale that's typical of Santana and how it covers the minor tonality harmony. The key is going to be A minor. And just quickly so you understand the chord changes in the harmony in the background, we're going from a G chord and then we're heading into an F. So that's the seventh chord and the sixth chord of the key of A minor. He does play a major five chord, but he's not really introducing any sounds of uh, harmonic minor too much there. Uh, the resolution takes place into the tonic of A minor, and that's basically the harmony that he's using. So uh, I took this from a small segment of one of his songs, uh, and I kind of modified it a bit. And, you know, so it's kind of, you know, directly from a Santana idea, but it's slightly modified, you know, to avoid copyright and all that good stuff. Um, now let's run through what he's doing here in terms of the scale and the leads. Now he's using a uh, pattern based off of the fifth string. If you're following the Creative Guitar Studio curriculum, that would be a pattern number two minor pentatonic scale off A. So that's the scale that he's basically using in the front end here. You can tell you're just really working within that one position and utilizing some bends up front with the pentatonic and then coming around into a faster pull-off that's kind of more like a grace note pull-off. And then walking through really an arpeggio at this point, but it's just notes out of the pentatonic. And he walks up again, does that bend. He's really utilizing the bend off the 15th fret D, pushing it up into the E tone. So, you know, watch out for those kind of sounds. At the end, it's targeting right into the A, the tonic note of the scale. So it's a pretty straightforward idea, lots of vibrato at the end, and, you know, a lot of, you know, stuff going on with the bends, you know, throughout the, you know, bulk of the line. So that is the first idea I want to share with you. We're going to take a short break, come back in just a moment, and I want to get into some of the Dorian concepts that he messes around with. <laughs> Well, here we go. This is another Santana sound, really popular sound of his, the Dorian mode sound. Now, what's happening here with the Dorian mode in minor tonality is we're creating a slight major effect off of the scale's major six degree. Now, Santana takes advantage of this sound in two ways. One is to include chord harmonies that would apply, you know, a major four chord. And we saw that in the, the second rhythm guitar example. But in another way is you can take the one chord of the key that you're operating within and you can convert it to a minor six chord and he does that in the song she's not there as the song off of uh, moonflower album so you want to check that out maybe but uh, what's happening here is we got this minor key progression in the key of G minor and it just dumps out of the minor into the uh, the G minor into a minor six so just like that it's pretty straightforward so uh, I'm using a minor seven G minor seven and I'm going over to a G minor six that's all there is to it. I got the G minor chord by adding the uh, F and the B flat and the D off of the fourth through second strings. G is the root in the bass. And then when I convert it to minor six, that F note just drops down to an E natural and now I've got G minor six. Now in terms of the licks that are going on here, because the, the F, sorry, the F natural, sorry, dropping down to the E natural is basically giving you the minor seven to the major six. And that's what's entering this uh, color Dorian mode. So the E natural, is giving you that Dorian effect. Now, in the lick, what's happening is I've got a small chord punch that I'm doing off G minor. I'm grabbing a high G on the third fret of uh, first string. And then I've got this bend that takes place on the fifth uh, fret of the third string coming around into the C tone. And then what I'm doing is a faster hammer-on pull-off idea out of a 16th note triplet. And I'm going from the third and the fifth frets of the third string over to the fifth fret of the fourth string. And then we come around here to the top, playing the high fifth fret note, get the B flat and the G wrapping things up. That, that high fifth fret second string note, that's the E, that's the Dorian tone. And then just to wrap things up, a quick F to G. Just kind of do a quick hammer on idea there and that's happening on the G minor at that point and I'm not playing anything that second time around on the uh, on the G minor six so it's kind of interesting because uh, you know and I noticed this a lot with his playing even in a harmony where you have this effect of the Dorian mode he's not really targeting specific Dorian tones on let's say uh, a major four chord or a dominant four chord or even you know a minor six at the time or whatever he's just kind of you know the harmony is there and this particular harmony is kind of a Latin based harmony 
harmony anyway, and it's moving kind of quick. So, you know, you can just influence the sound wherever you would like. So this particular lick, you know, and it's gonna be, you know, just perform something like that, you know, anywhere you want around this kind of a groove. So anyway, that's a really popular Santana sound. Lots of stuff there to uh, keep in check. Uh, I got one more lick for you though, and this time we're going to be introducing the sounds of harmonic minor. Well, the third and probably most popular minor color Santana will apply is how he targets the sound of harmonic minor upon dominant seventh five chords or major five chords of a minor key. Now, the color of this sound is instantly recognizable. It jumps out at you right away. Real Spanish, kind of Mexican, Latin sound. And, you know, a great example of this can be found in his song Smooth. You know, he applies harmonic minor color over an E dominant seventh chord. It's a dominant seven five chord in a key of A minor progression. Now, try playing the lead idea that I have for you here in my final example because it really highlights the effect of this sound in a very similar guitar phrase found from the song Smooth. I altered it slightly, but it's basically very close. Now, the idea that's happening here is we're using a chord progression moving from an A minor chord into an F to an E. And then what happens is, you know, already when we get to the E chord, it's a major five chord. So it's harmonic minor right there, but he beats it up a little bit more and adds in the sound of dominant seventh. All right, so there's a really cool color there when you mess around with that sound. And then when you start playing through your leads, what you're doing is you're targeting the raised seventh over any of the E major or E dominant seventh sounds. Now, the raised seventh in the key of A minor turns out being a G sharp, and the G sharp is the major third of an E chord. So we start off on the line, we have a high A note up top, and then as soon as that E chord comes in, we're pulling the G sharp right away, and then just fooling around some more with basic A minor scale. Then what happens is on the E7, when it comes back, uh, we're really not going to worry too much there at that point about the uh, G sharp. We're just going to do some nice bends there on the seventh fret of third string. You know, fooling around with things into the minor third of A. And then we're going to have a descending line that's going to wrap things up on the, on the second last, I should say, E dominant seventh chord. But you can hear that small changeover that I did right when I was wrapping up there. So that change is the G sharp coming in from the sixth fret of the fourth string to wrap things up into the A tone and have a, you know, the whole progression sort of uh, wrap itself back around to the A minor chord. So that's just sort of some quick examples, but really the thing you want to practice and get an understanding for is what's going on with targeting these major or dominant seventh five chords when you find them in a minor key. And that just means, let's say if you were in A minor, you'd have a E major or an E dominant seventh, uh, for example, to let's say we'll change keys if we went to G minor that would mean you'd have either a D major or a D dominant seventh and that would bring around your sound of uh, harmonic minor for that key so watch out for this stuff I've got plenty of videos online discussing how to use harmonic minor and all kinds of concepts with that scale so definitely you know check either my um, creative guitar studio youtube channel or you could check the, the guitar blog update channel you know both of them have lots of stuff you know covering this sound it is a pretty popular sound in music well, as you can tell, Santana plays guitar with a very distinct musical sound and style. As we've just seen, he uses a lot of pentatonic for melody, but there's also a lot of Dorian and natural minor and even some harmonic minor too. Uh, Carlos has always been into melody, which is another one of the reasons his music is so important to learn as a guitarist. He's been influenced by a tremendous variety of different music styles, and yet, you know, he always seems to manage to create songs that express his own way of playing and composing. In learning more about how to perform like Santana, you're going to need to spend a lot of time listening to his music and emulating him. And you know, after a period, you're going to get better at covering the Latin jazz rock style that he's so well known for, and your playing is going to improve right along with that. So anyway, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on all this in the comments section below. Thanks for your time, and we'll catch up again next week on my other channel for another episode of the Guitar Blog Insider.
If you want to learn the modes and get a really good understanding for how they can be used musically to write songs, play a solo, or compose melody lines, then you're in luck. My ebook, Using the Major Scale Modes, is a comprehensive manuscript outlining exactly how modes are used in respect to harmony and to compose or improvise melodic ideas. Over 50 pages of scale patterns, example progressions, and music theory all come together to create a comprehensive method on how to use the modes that's easy to understand. Using the Major Scale Modes is available for instant download in the View Our Products area at creativeguitarstudio.com. I've got 25 years experience teaching guitar and have written a well-organized step-by-step guitar course. Head over to my website at creativeguitarstudio.com and sign up for a free membership today. Join the thousands of members worldwide who have already enrolled. There's no need to try learning the guitar on your own. Let me help you become the best guitar player that you can be.